We're going to run a simple penetration and expansion test of the Hornady XTP in 10 millimeter, 180 grain jacket hollow point. I'll be using the sim test media. I have recalibrated that so it is comparable with 10% ordnance gel and adding four layers of denim. That is an IWBA testing protocol. I've tested some XTPs and some other calibers, uh, 357 SIG and 45 come to mind. The design envelope for this bullet is that it favors penetration versus expansion. I believe the design is that it's going to expand approximately 1.5 times or one and a half times the original diameter. And if I recall correctly in these other calibers, that's pretty much what we had. But we've got a 40 grain bullet resting on top of this 10 millimeter cartridge and it's got a little bit more pop to it. 1,180 feet per second. That is the advertised muzzle velocity. Test gun that you're looking at is the Glock 20. This is the short frame or SF. 4.6 inch barrel. There are my five shots measured from 10 feet. And the average, 1,155 feet per second. That's coming in at 533 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. So this does not feel like a full power 10 millimeter load. It is a little bit more recoil than I would typically get in a 40, and the platform I have for that is the Glock 23. So a much smaller handgun than this big heavy Glock 20, but recoil is not bad at all, and minimal muzzle flash. Next up is the test shot. Put some energy into the left side of that 50 pound block and it pivots off there a couple of inches, but no pass through on the 22 inch length. I reversed these tracks. This is the right side. We're going to focus on the left side, but this is pretty impressive through here. This stretch cavity, this permanent cavity runs for approximately nine inches out to about right here. Now, of course, it does narrow down once it gets past about the six and a half, seven inch mark, but that's pretty impressive. Also, you can't really see all this underneath there, but it is a good one and a half inches, almost one and a quarter inches wide in this area through here and approximately three quarters of an inch deep. So that's pretty impressive on that side. Now we get to the full track over here. Apologize for the focus, it's the lighting. Again, replicating that. Pretty nasty stuff there. Running on out again to the nine inch mark. There's a piece of lead that is broken off. We're going to see that more than once. I'll go ahead and let you know. There's the second one, piece of lead. We're out to 13 inches, 14, 15. Here's another small fragment of lead embedded right there. I might even find a few more as I melt this down. I do strain this so I can capture those fragments. And we're coming in at 17 and 1 8 inches. Had really good expansion. We may have broken that envelope just because of this additional velocity behind it. But that's looking really, really good. Let's just dig that out. 17 and an eighth inches. That looks really, really good. Let me get that cleaned up. Let's get the measurements, retained weight, and some close-ups. There's the high end of expansion, but the average is coming in at .656 inches. We saw those three lead fragments. There could be a few more. Retained weight coming in at 167.6 grains. I was pleased to see the bullet hold together as well as it did at these velocities, over 92% weight retention. Excellent penetration. For some folks, that might be a little bit too much for self-defense purposes, but for hunting applications, it could be a winner. And I know that a lot of folks will take the XTP, the bullet component itself, and use that in reloading. So pretty good performance in the first Hornady 10mm test that I posted. Thanks for watching.